This is the fourth section on chapter eight, the binomial expansion, and this section is about solving binomial problems. Now, in binomial expansion problems, we're often directed to a particular term in the expansion, and so it'd be useful for us to be able to pick out any term in the expansion, and we can, we can pick out any particular term in a binomial expansion. So, in the expansion of a plus b to the power n, a general term is given by this ncr or nr a to the power n minus r b to the power r. So for example, in the expansion of x plus y to the power 12, the y to the power 4 term is going to be given by 12c4 or 12 4, 12, that's like n, r is 4, so 12c4 x to the power 8, so that comes by doing n minus r, which is 8, and then this bit here, like the b to the power r, y to the power r, so y to the power 4. So here what we've got is n is equal to 12, and r is equal to 4. Example 6, find the coefficient of the x to the power 4 term in the this binomial expansion, 2 plus 3x to the power 10. So we can use what we've just done to help us do this without having to write out the whole expansion. We're only interested in the x to the power 4 term. Okay, so what's that going to be? Well, it's going to be, well, let's write down what n is. So n is 10 and r is 4. So it's always the power of the second term there that's going to be r. And we're using the fact that it's going to be this ncr, then the first term to the power n minus r times by b to the power r. That's a general term. So in this case, it's going to be 10 c4 times by 2 to the power n minus r, 10 minus 4, which is 6, times by b to the power r, in this case it's 3x, so it's going to be 3x to the power 4. So 3x to the power 4. So now we'll work this out. 10c4, that is 210, times by 2 to the power 6, that's 64, and then 3x all to the power 4, so that's 3 to the power 4, x to the power 4 is 81, x to the power 4. So we get this big number, 1,088,640, x to the power 4. We just want the coefficient of the x to the power 4, so that's the bit that we're interested in, just the number. Okay, part B. We want to find the coefficient of the x cubed term in this expansion. Now, it's a little bit more tricky in this question because when this gets expanded, it's going to get multiplied by this 2 plus x. So actually, to get the x cubed term, it's going to be 2 times by the x cubed term of this expansion and x times by the x squared term of this expansion. So let's write that down. The final x cubed term, or the coefficient of the x cubed term, will be 2 times by what we get from the x cubed of this, plus x times by what we get from the x squared of this. OK, so let's work this out. So 2 times by the x cubed of this expansion. Now, the x cubed. Uh, from this expansion, this will have a value of n equals to 7, because that's the power. And here, the power of this in expansion, r will be 3. OK, let's just move that over to the side, so I've got space to actually write my working r equals 3. So we just do ncr, so 7c3, times by and then it's going to be 3 to the power of n minus r. So 3 to the power of n minus r. So 
that's going to be 4 times by the negative 2x to the power r, which is 3. So negative 2x to the power 3. OK, so 2 times by what I get when I expand this, the xq term, when I expand the brackets, plus here x. So when this x gets times by what, uh, an x squared term here, that's also going to give me a final x cubed. So x times by um, what I'm going to get here. So again, n will be 7. But this time r will be 2 because I want to look at the x squared term. So x times by this will be 7c2 times by 3 to the power of 7 minus 2, 5, times by negative 2x to the power r, in this case it's 2. Right, so let's now work out what these numbers are. So we've got 2 times by 7c3, that's 35, times by 3 to the power 4, which is 81, times by negative 2x all cubed is going to be negative 8x cubed. There's our x cubed term. Plus, now I'm going to stick the x at the end, that's where I'm going to get the x cubed. 7c3, sorry, 7c2 which is 21, times by 3 to the power 5, that's 243, times by negative 2x all squared, so that's going to be 4x squared, and then I'm times it by the, the x as well, so plus 4x cubed. So these are my x cubed terms. Right, let's work out this total coefficient. So starting with this, 2 times by 35 times by 81 times by negative 8 gives us negative 45,360 x cubed. And then plus, so 21 times by 243 times by 4 is positive 20,412 x cubed. So what do we have in total for our x cubed? So negative 45,360 plus 20,412 gives us negative 24,948 x cubed. So the bit we're interested in is just this bit here. That part is the coefficient. Now there are other ways of doing this. But what I did was think to myself, right, where am I going to get x cubed? 2 times an x squared here, x times, or 2 times the x cubed, plus x times the x squared, which is basically what I did. Uh, so that way it saves having to write out lots of parts of the expansion. Example 7, g of x equals 1 plus kx, all to the power 10, where k is a constant, Given that the coefficient of the x cubed term in the binomial expansion of g of x is 15, find the value of k. So in a question like this, we're going to be using the general term. So the first thing to do is to write down the values of n, which is 10, and the value of r, because we're looking at the x cubed term here, is going to be 3. So now we can write our general term as 10c3 times by... 1, the first term, to the power of n minus r, so that's 7, it's basically 1, times by kx to the power of r, which is 3, and that equals 15, the coefficient of the x cubed term is 15. Right, so now we'll multiply this out. Now 10c3 is 120, and then kx, all cubed, will become k cubed x cubed equals 15 x cubed like this. So we can simplify this to 120 k cubed equals 15. Yeah, we can get rid of the x cubed because we're now looking at the coefficients. So from here, we can say that k cubed is equal to 15 over 120. 
Now this simplifies, so this will give k cubed is equal to 1 8th. And then if we cube root both sides, we will get k equals a cube root of an eighth, which is a half. So there's our solution. We get a value of k equals a half. Example eight, write down the first three terms, so only just the first three terms in ascending powers of x. Now that's the way you would normally do it anyway, because x is the second term, it's going to be going up in powers, which we'd expect of the binomial expansion of one plus qx to the power eight, where q is a non-zero constant. Right, so let's start with that. So the first term is one to the power eight. I could just write one plus 8c1 times by 1 to the power 7 times by qx to the power 1. So that's the second term. Third term will be 8c2 times by 1 to the power 6 times by qx all squared. And the last term we want for now is going to be 8c3 times by 1 to the power 5 times by qx all cubed plus dot 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 to show that we've only written part of the expansion so now we'll simplify it so we've got one then 8c1 is 8 times by 1 to the power 7 so that's just going to be 8 so we'll have 8qx plus 8qx then um, 8c2 is 28 so we're going to have 28 times by q squared x squared so 28 q squared x squared. Then the last term that we want is going to be 8c3, which is 56 times by 1, which is 56. So that 56 qx all cubed becomes q cubed x cubed. And again, plus dot 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 to show that it continues. Now moving on to part b, it says given that the expansion of 1 plus q qx to the power 8, it's almost like a tongue twister. The coefficient of x is negative r, and the coefficient of x squared is 7r. Find the value of q and the value of r. Now, since there are two unknowns, I'm guessing it's going to be two equations which we solve simultaneously. Right, so the first thing it says is that the coefficient of x is negative r. Now, where's the coefficient of x? Well, it's that 8x. The coefficient of a, uh, x, 8q, is equal to negative r, equation number one. Uh, second bit of information, the coefficient of x squared is 7r. OK, what's the coefficient of x squared? It's 28q cubed. So second bit of information, 28q cubed, sorry, q squared. So it's like a tongue twister, is equal to 7r. So now we want to solve simultaneously. Uh, let's have a look. I could rearrange this and make R the subject. So I will have basically R equals negative 8Q, which I can then substitute into here. So the second equation will now become 28Q squared minus, oh, sorry, equals 7 times by R, which is negative 8 Q. So that's 28 Q squared equals negative 56 Q. I'll divide both sides by 28 and that will give me Q squared is equal to negative 2 Q. Then what I can do from here is divide both sides by Q or I could bring the 2 Q across and factorize it. Now, if I did that, I'll show you what will happen. I have Q squared plus 2Q equals 0. If I factorize that, I'll have Q and then Q plus 2 equals 0. Now, the solutions are Q equals 0 or Q equals negative 2. But it says here that Q is a non-zero constant. So we can't have Q equal to 0. So we'll just get Q equal to 2 or negative 2. And I would have got that anyway if I just divide both sides by Q here. So we've got the value of Q. 
we can now substitute that back into the easiest looking equation. Um, I think probably this one here to find the value of R, or we'll use this one here. So R will equal negative eight times by Q, which is negative two. So that gives us a value of R of 16. So we'll just underline that there. So there's our solutions, two equations, which we solve simultaneously to find the value of Q and R. So you should now be able to do exercise 8D on pages 164 to 167 of the textbook.